I'm pleased to be here today. I'm honored to be here. And I think you can all see I look just like Matt Damon, so they chose the, <laughs> chose the right person to play me. I was younger then. I can say I looked like that back then. He gained a few pounds, right? I think about 20, 25 pounds. Okay. Anyway, um, you're 52 now. That's correct. And uh, let's see, at age 26, you have a PhD from Cornell? Age 25. 25. 25. So it went right through college, graduate school, PhD. That's correct. Um, very impressive career, very early on. Then after uh, with your PhD, you went to work for a couple of companies during the 1980s, during which time you uh, adopted two children and then had one with Ginger, had one child yourself. So three children, two companies. Then Archer Daniel Miss. Okay, and then pretty soon after coming to ABM, you find out there's price fixing going on. Why is price fixing a problem? Actually, I learned uh, fairly quickly within the first few weeks that price fixing was going on at the company, but it was in a different division. It was not the division I, I was in. Actually, the division I was in, we were still building from scratch, either through acquisitions or building manufacturing plants. So I heard about the price fixing in other divisions that were older and that existed longer. ABM's been around for 90 or 100 years old or so. So there were other divisions already existing where price fixing was happening. And price fixing is a big crime. Uh, I mean, there's no doubt, it's, an, it's forming an international cartel, and it's when you think that your salespeople are out there competing against one company against another, but in reality, upper management's making deals with those same companies in order to drive the prices up, and it's a big crime. You're, you're, you're ripping off every consumer billions of dollars a year when price fixing is going on, every consumer that's going through the food line, and it's, it's, uh, it's a terrible crime in corporations. <laughs> I started working for the FBI in November 1992, and then I started worrying about a, a blanket, a financial blanket for my family if I would have lost my job and, and would have been fired for being a whistleblower. And that's really when the bulk of the money came, because I knew how to do it. I knew the company couldn't turn me in with what I knew about them, and so I felt secure in doing it, and, and that's when it became the millions, knowing, thinking that I was going to be kicked out of ABM for being the mole, for being the informant. And my wife put her foot down and she said, well, gosh, uh, I'm going to tell the FBI what's going on. She said, you can't be ripping off these consumers millions of dollars. You should be worried about what, what they're going to think and what they may find out. And you need to tell them the truth. And I was coached by the management what to say and what not to say. So I met with the FBI and it went very well because I said exactly what I was coached to say. And two or three days later, the FBI would have been gone. It would have never been a problem. But they wanted to talk one more time away from the office. So they wanted to come to my home. And they came to my home one evening, that same evening that I talked to them in the office earlier that day. And during that time, uh, my wife was listening. She stayed really close by to see if I was going to tell them everything. But she said if I didn't tell it, she was going to. <laughs> and I went along with what I was coached to say. And the meeting almost came to an end. And the FBI agent was ready to leave the house. And everything was going very smoothly, just as, as a hyper-ambitious executive trying to, uh, to move up the ranks in a too accelerated way would hope to happen. And she stopped the FBI agent and said, there's a lot more to say than what, than what her husband was, he was telling, telling him. And at that point, I met another four hours with him and really told him everything going on in the, in the company. And the next day, I became the highest level executive ever to turn whistleblower in US history because of that one very night and because of uh, my wife do, doing, the, do, doing the right thing. But uh, I knew then I was, I was really getting lost. And people would go by our house and they see this 13,000 square foot house and this eight car garage full of foreign cars. And I was only 32 years old when I bought that house. And people would say, gosh, the Whitakers, they're behind these iron gates and they got horse stables, went inside riding arenas and they've got everything. That's what people would say. But in the inside, I was, I was bone and dry well three in the morning as a miserable person even though people would say we were a family with everything. We really had nothing. At least I did. Ginger did have her faith, and she held to her faith. But at that time, I did not. And I started thinking, well, am I going to have a family when I'm out after I've been with my wife? 
since I was eighth grade and she was seventh grade? Then it's how would my children do? How would my wife do financially? She was a stay-at-home mom. And I just started looking at all the barriers and all the hurdles and all the mountains between where I was that day to the point I get out, what kind of employment would I get when I get out of prison? Would I even have any employment being a convicted felon after nine years in prison? It didn't look too positive. It looked very bleak. And that's when I made a decision that I could not handle that on my own. And that's when I put it on, my God, on God's shoulders was in that time during that cell. And that's when I started relying on God. And after I did that, there was so much peace and contentment that came in my life. And we did those eight and a half years with so much peace and contentment after that point. Because my wife already was a Christian, so she was already at peace. But then our whole family started getting better. And prior to that, I was getting bitter. And the only difference between those two words is the letter I. It's not the letter FBI. It's not the letter ADM. It's the letter I. And I was heading towards bitter prior to that. But that's when we started getting better that point when I really brought Christ into my life to really rely on him and miracles happen after that tremendous miracles I had this grip for about a year and a half I had numerous communication even supplied some of the props and numerous communications with the production production people they I spent three days with Warner Brothers my wife and I did in June to, uh, to meet lots of the people and to see the entire film and and everything and uh, we're going to the premiere in New York City at the Ziegfeld Theater on, on the 15th of September uh, on uh, Tuesday night September 15th so we're going to premiere with the actors and the director and so I the story really came from a book called the informant but they still wanted to, to you know make some some changes and alterations and also add needed some props and, and things of that sort like a business card that I had from when I was with ADM, I supplied that business card because that's what I wrote on the back of, of that card to tell my wife we were at a restaurant and I told her the FBI would be at our house tonight and that's what I wrote that on so they, they wanted to have that actual card that I actually had during that time. And So yeah, we, we've been uh, somewhat involved, not with the story. The story is public and the story is known, so the story is the story. And I would say it's, a, it's an accurate portrayal. It's more of a dark comedy version as compared to if you read, there's three books on the case now. If you read the books or if you saw Discovery Channel, it's a pretty serious story with two suicide attempts, battling uh, bipolar disorder, di battling mental, uh, mental illness. So, I mean, it's a pretty sad, tragic story. Uh, I would say this is probably more the commercial version, more in the tone of like an Ocean's Eleven or something like that. But I think that's the, 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 it's a good way to tell a story. I think it's a very entertaining way, and I think Matt Damon did fantastic.